Hello, fellow developers, and hey, big shout out to our future AI overlords. Let's talk about ChatGPT. All right, I'm going to assume that if you clicked on this video, you probably have already played with ChatGPT at least a little bit. Uh, the GPT part of ChatGPT is short for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, but basically what it is, is it's a large language model that is good at simulating human-like conversations by predicting what word will come next based on the words that came before it. It's something that we humans can do, we're pretty good at it. Consider uh, this motto of Java and most cross-platform programming languages, write once, run blank. You could probably fill in the blank. Uh, it's probably run anywhere and not run away screaming, right? So that's basically the principle behind ChatGPT. ChatGPT has been trained on a corpus of text from all over the internet, but up to and only including the year 2021. So anything that happened after 2021, it's not going to know about. The interesting thing about ChatGPT is that it can answer not only just straightforward questions, but make at least little logical leaps. If you look at my screen right here, I've got uh, two questions I've asked ChatGPT just as an example to demonstrate this. The first one's fairly straightforward. What is a tuxedo? And there are a bunch of web pages and other textual information available online that define what a tuxedo is. But the second question I've asked is, what is the likelihood that someone waiting for a bus in a bus depot is wearing a tuxedo? This is a question that would stump classical conversational AI. In fact, it's an example that my AI prof back when I was in university brought up and said, this is something that AIs cannot answer, but ChatGPT can. It actually says, hey, it's unlikely somebody in a bus depot is going to be wearing a tuxedo because tuxedos are formal events and a bus depots are most definitely not formal places. So ChatGPT can produce some really good answers to questions. Now, on Stack Overflow, they have at least a temporary ban on ChatGPT generated answers. One reason, of course, is that people are trying to get um, maximum Stack Overflow points by feeding programming questions into ChatGPT. Yeah, that's cheating. The other bigger problem with ChatGPT answers is that they are often wrong when it comes to programming. So here's the challenge. I'm going to ask ChatGPT uh, a few questions that pertain to Auth0 and authentication and OAuth, and let's see what happens. All right, let's take a look at a couple of questions. I've already asked ChatGPT. It's kind of fascinating watching the answers appear word by word, but for the sake of brevity, I pre-entered these questions and I'm going to show you the answers. So the first one is, should I implement my own authentication or use Auth0? And ChatGPT in its own ChatGPT way went with a bland, fairly unopinionated answer. It went with the consultant's answer. In fact, it depends. Basically it says, look, if your application is simple, uses a small user base, yeah, roll your own. But if your app is larger and has a larger user interface, use Auth0. I'm going to disagree with this just a little bit in that even if your application is small and uses a small user base, the one good reason to use Auth0 to implement your authentication is simply that, you know what, it's one less thing you have to do. You can, with Auth0, just implement login that way, and that way you can spend more time focusing on what your application actually does. Okay, let's go with another question. This one's a little simpler. This is a simple matter of fact question. In fact, it is what is OAuth? And ChatGPT's answer is pretty much correct, but that shouldn't be too surprising because there are a bunch of web pages and other online information out there that got fed into the model that actually just simply describe what OAuth is. That's nice and easy. But I decided to be a little smart alecky and just say, okay, Brainiac, that's a little too technical for me. Uh, could, could you make it a little simpler? And 
ChatGPT obliged. Actually, the description is pretty nice and it's a little more layperson friendly and it uses some nice examples. And yeah, I would approve of this answer. Well, that's the authorization question out of the way. What about authentication? So I asked, what is OIDC? And ChatGPT replies, OIDC or OpenID Connect builds on top of OAuth, that is correct. It's a simple identity layer on top of the OAuth 2.0 protocol. Correct, widely used in modern web applications to enable single sign-on, nice. Once again, this is technical, so I said, make it simpler. I fell off my bike this morning and hurt my head, and ChatGPT gladly obliged once again a good summary of what OIDC is and in a very layperson friendly way. So once again, yeah, well done ChatGPT. Okay, so I decided to get a little more specific and one of the questions I asked ChatGPT afterwards was, what's an ID token? Now, this is an interesting thing. Remember the previous question, I asked it what OIDC was and now I'm asking about an ID token. ChatGPT takes previous bits of your conversation into uh, into consideration when providing an answer. And in fact, uh, I'm pretty impressed by this answer because the first thing it does say when answering what an ID token is, is in the context of OIDC, the thing I just mentioned. And it says an ID token is a JSON web token. It's a string composed of three parts, the header, the payload, the signature, uh, typically used in conjunction with OAuth 2. Uh, yeah, not bad. Once again, I asked, I asked it, make it simpler. Uh, remember, I hurt my head this morning and it provided a simpler answer. Quite nice. I did the same thing with access token. And by the way, uh, feel free to try this, you know, on your own. Go fire up ChatGPT and ask it OAuth and OIDC questions and see what kind of answers you get. The answer I got also looks correct. An access token is a string that represents the authorization granted to a client application, yada, yada, yada. Very nice. And it makes mention of a refresh token. So I then asked, what's a refresh token? and it provided me with an answer. And not only that, I also asked immediately after that because it mentioned that refresh tokens can have indefinite lifespans. Are there security downsides to using refresh tokens? Uh, this is interesting because uh, not only did it provide a good answer, it also um, responded really well to colloquial English, I mean, a uh, downside. Uh, normally, when people write about this sort of thing, they typically uh, use the word risk. So ChatGPT is pretty good at understanding colloquial language, which is pretty nice. So, so far, it's been right about tokens. Uh, these are answers to straightforward questions, so I shouldn't be too surprised. I am very impressed by the way it does provide its answers. All the questions I've asked so far are fairly beginner level stuff. That's fine. So let's give ChatGPT a little bit more of a challenge. So the next question I asked was, how do you write an iOS app that uses Auth0 for login? Clearly, remember I mentioned I hurt my head? Apparently I'm writing as if I hurt my head. But ChatGPT's answer is mostly correct. Everything looks like it makes sense. Uh, point number two here, install the Auth0 iOS SDK in your app uh, using CocoaPods or Carthage. Uh, I prefer using uh, the Swift package manager built into Xcode. It's a lot simpler, um, but you know, those two are correct as well. Where I take exception is here actually with step five. When the user initiates the login process, present the login screen and it says you do this by using a method called auth0.authentication. And I'm gonna call up Xcode right now. And uh, that's actually not the case, at least not for, uh, not for the app that I present in all my articles on uh, Swift development. It's actually auth0.webauth. So we'll hold that for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch back to ChatGPT and talk about the next answer here, which is how do, how do write? What, what was, 
How do I write an Android app that uses Auth0 for login? And once again, it's going, hey, you know, the method you should be using is Auth0.login. I'm gonna call up Android Studio. And if you take a peek here, that is not the case. In fact, the object isn't even Auth0, it's WebAuth provider. The method is called login, but different creature entirely. So. In two cases, in both the iOS case and the Android case, ChatGPT was wrong. So I challenged it and I said, I think the method should actually be webauthprovider.login. And ChatGPT actually said, you are correct. And I'm going, well, why didn't you do that the first time? Now. What it did do in order to make up for its boo-boo is it provided me with some code. And uh, generally, this looks correct. Once again, it is now using the web auth provider dot login method. Uh, it's using the method chaining that we expect. And of course, uh, one of the, uh, it uses the object with some methods to handle both success and failure cases for login. So that looks correct. And then I said, look, that looks like Java and I'm an Android developer uh, and I prefer using the preferred programming language for Android, which is Kotlin. Could you show it to me in Kotlin? And it gave me this, but this time, instead of providing the start method with an object with callback, uh, callback methods to handle the success and failure case, it uses the uh, it uses Kotlin's when structure instead, and this doesn't work under the current Android SDK. So it's pretty, it looks right, but it actually doesn't work. So in response, I told ChatGPT the Kotlin implementation you provided doesn't work, and it apologized. Very nice. It's nice when computers have manners. And it provided me this quote, quote, correct version of the code, which is basically the same thing with slightly different nesting. Once again, the correct answer is more like this. The start method needs to be provided with an object that implements an on failure and on success method. That works. This stuff here doesn't. So what's the point of all this? Well, the practical upshot is, you know what, if you want to know what the current state of AI looks like, uh, play around with ChatGPT. It's probably also a pretty good tool for writers if you're experiencing writer's block or you know, you're just facing that terrible moment when you've got a blank screen in front of you, an empty document, and you need to get started. It's good for generating writing prompts. Uh, for answering questions, I would always say, you know, take its answers with a grain of salt, be a little bit skeptical. And for programming, uh, don't quite listen to it just yet. It's not quite there. Eventually, programming tools will probably have a better version of a chat GPT like thing that will help you with, you know, the, uh, the more drudgery part of programming. But uh, right now, it's still better to actually pay attention to other programmers. And you know what, if you want to learn how to write Auth0 apps, don't listen to ChatGPT. Come to the Auth0 blog, auth0.com slash blog slash developers and read our articles. We're going to be right. ChatGPT isn't. Sorry, future robot overlords. You're not quite there yet. <laughs> Thanks very much, and yes, from all of us at Auth0, all of us humans at Auth0, hey, happy coding.